and you're the perfect person to be doing this interview with since you're like the you're the video guy you know so <laughs> you've made a few videos in your day right i've, I've done some yeah but <laughs> so great well thank you for doing this this is so sure. wonderful um i'm going to ask some of the questions that they kind of um seated us with just i think because yeah. um that way it'll help them tie all this together or what have you so right um so the first one is how was your web text innovative in historical material technological contexts uh, within which it was created. So actually, when I, I was talking to Susan and I asked her that question, then I thought, wow, I should think about that myself for when you're going to be interviewing me and uh, see if I can come up with a good answer. And I, so I went back and looked at the previous web texts that had been, you know, that had won or had been, um, you know, the kind of runner-up for the web text award prior to mine. So mine was in 2006. And um, it was really interesting to go back and look at the the early ones. Some of them weren't available anymore, but from the ones that were available, I was really um, I was taken by the extent to which the early web texts, at least these ones that were judged best web texts, were taking on the question of links and hypertext, you know, and kind of reading practices. And it really struck me that it was something that was so n new then to us as writers, you know, writing scholarly hypertext, but also to readers, you know, and trying to f help readers figure out how to navigate. There was a lot of, you know, sort of instructions at the beginning and, um, you know, discussion of how this text was different in terms of its, you know, uh, organization and previous texts and so on. So I was really kind of taken by that. And um, I think before my web text, uh, the, the other web, a web text that I was really influenced by was Anne Wysocki's Bookling Monument, which really, you know, was kind of about linking, but in a totally different way, and it was really more about the interface. And so I, I think, you know, that was that was really influential for me in thinking, kind of maybe um, assuming that readers were kind of getting familiar with uh, how to navigate hypertext, and then instead thinking about, okay, what interface are we providing with them, providing them with, that will um, uh, not only serve as a navigational space, but also will um, will convey some some content, some meaning. And so I think that's a that was a that was a shift that I saw between the earlier hypertext and my own. And I think that's so with the uh, with my web text. It's really a lot about the the meaning of the interface and how that how the interface contributes to the meaning of the of the text and so I think that was kind of a that's a shift that I saw and then I you know looking at hypertext that came after that I mean at, at web text that came after that it seems like that's still a really interesting and important element of what what we're seeing as like the best web texts are the ways that they um, craft an interface and so as to convey meaning you know when I was talking to Susan about her Wondercomer piece that's very much what it's about is just kind of how how all the elements are laid out and how that uh, layout is significant. So, yeah, nice. I wonder if there's a connection between like some of the threads that you take up in the piece, like metaphor, metonymy. I mean, you, uh, reading through the piece, I'm thinking of those as applying to the compositions of the students. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't normally think of it in terms of interface, but uh, you know, like. Is there a way in which your composition and having that kind of interface operates differently than like the pre or the, you know the yeah. previous ways of accessing the web? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so the whole it was interesting. So the history of that uh, web text when I so I went to the conference, the Computers and Writing Conference at Stanford in 2005, and it was a really fabulous conference. And when I got back from the conference, I thought, well, I want to you know take my paper and you know make a web text out of it. And and I did, and but the um, the inter I was playing around with Flash. I was really into Flash, and I uh, the interface was very um, it was interactive. Windows kind of opened and closed and slid, and you know things moved around and stuff like that. And I submitted that and got some feedback on it that the um, that the interface was actually kind of getting in the way. You know that it was making everything it was kind of condensing the text. It was making it so that the readable part of the text was really small because there was so much other stuff going on, you know, in terms of windows opening and closing and so on. So, um, so I had to rethink the whole design of the thing. And one of the comments I got from one of the editors was that the um, that it seemed like I I mentioned a lot I I, I mentioned the conference 
uh, and maybe should have more information there about what was going on in the conference. You know, it didn't really have anything to do with the interface of the design. But, you know, thinking about that comment, I thought, well, maybe I should uh, try to recreate the conference, as it were, you know, and kind of set it up so that people who were, who were there would recognize it as kind of, you know, uh, you know, with the images and so on of the conference, and that people who weren't there would have this kind of, you know, pseudo experience of having gone to the conference and so that that really then kind of recreating the experience of the conference and I'm not sure if that's metaphoric or metonymic or or what but um, that became sort of the guiding principle and so the you know the background image is that Burgers of Calais sculpture garden which anyone who went to the conference would have seen because you know we were walking back and forth between buildings and that garden was right in the middle of it and so the movement of the you know as the text moves around as you go from link to link it's, you know, kind of recreates the movement, you know, to and from and so on. And then this background sounds and so on were meant to create this kind of, um, you know, experience, a kind of a user experience that, that went not necessarily beyond reading, but that kind of supplemented the reading of the text. Um, and so I think in that sense, it's a little bit different from the hypertext that came before where it was really, it was all about reading, you know, and how an organization is structured and how to navigate and how to put together different meanings depending on the order of the nodes that you visited and so on. And this was not, um, yeah, it was also still about the experience of the reader, but maybe a little bit more um, broadly defined, I suppose. And more multimodal in some ways? Yeah, or? more multimodal, sure, yeah. Yeah, the sound thing, you know, I tried to think, well, I've got them, they're moving, there's movement, there's image, and then what, what kind of sounds can I put in there, you know? So I have, like, birds singing and uh, bells ringing and people talking, you know, um, so as to kind of recreate the conference um, experience. And I did actually, in terms of the content, also add more um, of an explanation. It's really interesting at that conference that people were talking about assessment a lot. Uh, you know, it was still pretty early on 2005, and we were all giving assignments to our students and asking them to, you know, make videos and web texts and things like that. But then I, I felt uh, kind of a uncertainty, and other people did too, in, in terms of how we assessed what our students gave us and, you know, what, what expertise we had that we could draw on in assessing this. So that it was really a, it was a question that a lot of people were talking about, so it seemed like it was a fortuitous time to um, publish about it. And I guess that kind of segues to the next question, which is the, um, you know, do you see your web text as having influenced the field or, or as having continued influence? How, you know, how do you situate it in the larger trajectory and conversation of the field? Yeah, it was so it was so early in that conversation. I, I, uh, I reread the web text uh, a little while ago, and there were really only three articles that I could find. Um, where people were commenting on how to assess multimedia um, student projects, and there was a lot of discussion at the conference. But the, you know, the publications were pretty minimal. But now, I mean, there, there's books and articles, and it's a, it's a you know, it's really become a, a key uh, discussion point. So I think you know, mine was an early contribution. And then I, I don't know. I mean, in terms of the web text itself and the design of it. Um, you know, people don't do Flash anymore, but there was a moment there when everyone was working in Flash, and that was pretty fun. Um, and again, I mean, just the, just the idea of the interface as being, um, you know, a, a place where um, you can create some, some meaning, some scholarly meaning. You know, I think that that may have some influence on, you know, kind of, uh, may have influenced future hype, uh, Kairos and other web texts. Uh, I guess a couple of questions about the project itself. So this notion of metaphor as uh, kind of um, a key to assessment or metonymy, but that is um, um, a, an interesting angle, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And um, I'm wondering if, you know, in the time that has passed between then and now, if you feel like there are now other angles or, you know, it would would you propose something in addition to metaphor or different than metaphor to to handle assessment now? Yeah, oh yeah. I think it's just one one element. I mean, I think there's lots of different ways to go about assessing and <clears throat> really back then I was looking for something that we could claim expertise in, you know, where we could say, yeah, this is we, you know, we we don't teach, we may not be the most expert in video or audio or image or anything like that, but you know, rhetoric we we kind of get and we understand, you know, uh, tropes and so on. Mm -hmm. 
And, um, and I was also really interested in the kind of multi aspect of multimodal co- composing. And when, and I, and I saw with my own students and I still see with my own students that when we ask them to, um, you know, to combine modes, there's, um, you know, they're not, they're not used to doing that. I mean, you know, usually they're either asked to write a paper or create a video or do an image and not necessarily to bring all those things together. And I, I still do see students struggling with, um, you know, the question of, uh, how to make how to how to bring them together meaningfully um, so and and how not to just simply have things repeat each other or how not to have things that are just so totally different you know and not you know talking to each other so I think there's lots of ways to to discuss that with students and not necessarily metaphor or metonymy but you know just simple things like juxtaposition or irony or you know there's all kinds of other ways to approach that um, but like I said, I think this is just one part of the whole puzzle of, of doing assessment. And I think, you know, there's lots of really rich options now and rubrics and other kinds of things that people are developing that um, that are helpful. One of the other issues, too, is when, you know, when you talk about multimodal projects, you're talking about a whole range of things. And so I don't – there's not a one-size-fits-all, really um, – and I'm sure you've seen this in your own work. You know, when you ask students to do things that are a little different, they want to know, and it's really our responsibility to tell them how we're going to be responding to them. You know, what what how we're going to be assessing what they do if it's something they've never done before. And it's funny because I know a lot of times it's something that we've never done before either. You know, we're giving the assignment for the first time ourselves, and so it's 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 interesting. I mean, I think it's really productive kind of um, nervousness that you can have when you when you do that sort of thing. Um, so no, I mean, I think it's just one, one aspect or one angle on it that, that at the time was, was maybe more important as we were kind of developing as a field, our own ways of approaching, um, this kind of, this kind of project. 